Hello, Myrtle Grove Church. We are so glad that you've chosen to join us. Uh, we wanted to do a little bit of Bible study kind of in your midweek to encourage you and to, uh, to, to uplift you and just get into the Word for a little bit. I've asked uh, Brother Jim Gramlich to be here with us and to help share uh, a little bit of his thoughts about the passages. Actually, his, uh, his thoughts about this passage that really prompted this so uh, we'll, we'll get into that in just a moment, but I wanted to remind you that if you do have prayer requests, normally during our midweek, mm -hmm. we share prayer, prayer needs for one another and pray uh, with one another. And so if you uh, have those prayer requests, make sure that you call the church office or email and send those prayer requests in so that we can know how we can be praying for one another. If you get a chance d during the week sometime, pick up the phone and call one of your brothers and sisters in Christ and just let them know that you love them encourage them pray for them over the phone that's okay i do that all the time and so it, it's not it may be awkward the first time but it's it's not too awkward to do and you could do that um, and it, it would be a great encouragement to uh, the believers if you could do that um, but but we are praying for you and we want to know your prayer needs and so if you have your bible and if you could take your bible out and turn to nehemiah chapter 8 and uh jim how did you come across this passage here recently, and, and, and what made it stand out to you and speak to you? Okay. Well, I was in the book of Nehemiah anyway, and um, every Tuesday we had the food pantry over here, and I try to give a, I don't know, uh, an inspiring little short verse every, uh, every Tuesday. So I'm in Nehemiah, and I'm looking at uh, verse 10, and it just hit me. I said, this fits with the food pantry because... Uh, it talks about serving food, serving drinks, things like that, and helping those who are in need. So it fit perfect mm -hmm. with the scripture. So obviously you came over and talked to me that day, and I said, boy, can you believe that God laid this on my heart right here today? And it fit perfect. So Yeah. So it's Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10? Verse 10, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and read that to us? I will. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some of those... Who have nothing prepared this day is sacred to our lord do not grieve for the joy of the lord is your strength amen that's a good verse mm -hmm. so why don't we uh talk for just a few minutes about the background of this of this passage and and what this is about okay so uh what, when you were doing your bible study and you mm -hmm. were kind of digging in what did you find out about the context of this passage okay um actually i had to when I was reading about this particular passage, I kind of went back a little bit, and I went back to the book of Ezra, actually. I'm not going to yeah. cover the whole book of Ezra, but the Israelites were in captivity, and then they were in exile, and um, Ezra decided, okay, God put it on his heart, you need to rebuild the temple. So after they rebuilt the temple, the people got excited, and then God put it on the heart of Nehemiah that in Jerusalem, the walls around the city had been completely destroyed, and uh, they put it on the heart, God put it on the heart of Nehemiah to rebuild the walls. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the basic context of this. And that, but it, the, the, the part we're going to jump into, I'm sure, is the heart of the people. How did it change? Why did it change? Yeah. yeah. And that's what excited me because I look at our church and I think, boy, do we need this? Yeah. So, so the, the people were, God is bringing the people back into the land. He's giving them these two leaders, Ezra, mm -hmm. and he's, what is he? Ezra is a uh, priest and a scribe. Okay, so he's the one that's sharing the Word of God, the, mm -hmm. the law, mm -hmm. the Old Testament law, which would have been the Torah. We call that the Torah. Mm -hmm. And then you have Nehemiah, mm -hmm. and who is he? Nehemiah was actually, uh, before he was a governor, he was actually a cupbearer for the yeah. king. Mm -hmm. And uh, that wasn't the best job in the world, not exactly the job I'd want to have. Uh, in case somebody was trying to poison the king, uh, the cupbearer had to take the first sip and all that. Yeah. But uh, then he kind of, uh, God laid it on his heart, and then he went to the king, and the king said, you know something, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to provide food, I'm going to provide money, I'm going to provide trees to, to do this. Mm -hmm. And he did. Lots of resources. So, okay. so but, God had obviously blessed Nehemiah with that position because... You don't become the cupbearer of the king without being a trustworthy person. Very loyal. Somebody that's, right. that's loyal. Somebody who's close to the king. They they would have developed a, a very close relationship mm -hmm. over the years of Nehemiah's service there to the king. Uh, and so 
you know, that, that was definitely a gift of God for him to be in that position. Mm -hmm. He was so, obviously a very intelligent, intelligent yeah. man, very learned definitely. and very gifted at um, managing people. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And so we see his gifts come to, uh, come to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They're rebuilding and, and under Nehemiah's leadership and, and under the spiritual direction of Ezra. Now the, the walls have, are being rebuilt and uh, so things are coming together. Mm -hmm. But so then what, what happens in kind of is the turning point leading up to this passage? What has just happened? Well, let's see. Uh, what just happened to this was they just got finished building mm -hmm. the wall. And, but the most amazing thing to me is they did it in 52 days. Yeah. And that's incredible right there. But the, the other amazing thing to me is the people that, that built this wall were just everyday people. They were goldsmiths, silversmiths, businessmen, poor people, mm -hmm. mommies and, and daddies. That's right. You know, I, I love. There's one. There's one instance in here where a. <laughs> it's so funny where there's a, a man and his two daughters, and they built one section of the wall in yeah. front of their house. Yeah. And and I smile when I see that because uh, some of uh, the people at our church know Sonny and Barbara Goldsby. Barbara is a master carpenter. So yeah. I read that and I thought of Barbara instantly. You know, mm -hmm. here's a girl who can do yeah. man's work. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they and they strengthen their hands to the task yeah. is what the Bible said. Even though exactly. Sanballat and Tobiah were coming up against the people as they mm -hmm. were working, the Bible says that they were renewed in their strength and they even took up uh, swords and shields and spears and all that to protect the wall. That's right. Uh, and so that the work could continue and they strengthened their hands and the Lord gave them strength to complete the wall in 52 days. That's amazing it is. to think about how big, you know, maybe seven miles or so. I don't know. Well, they had to cut it's the a, it's timbers. A long ways they around. had to build the, build the gates. Think yeah. of how many gates were built and, yeah. and put in the uh, shackles to hold the gates and everything yeah. else. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Luckily, we don't have any story. sand ballots or... Tobias or anybody at this church, right? No. We don't have any negative no, people at this not church. Not in the church. Oh, no way. But there's always those outside the church that want to stop the work of God, too. But That's God, true. And God brought them through that. That's true. And so then they discovered, they rediscovered the, the book of the law. Mm -hmm. And so Ezra is He's preaching asked, the word. That's right. He's asked to read the the book of the law. Yeah. Yeah. And so he they build this platform, and he stands up, and he reads the the word mm -hmm. and the the rest of the people they all stand they all up stand to read up. the word too so uh that's kind of why that's kind of why we do that's that why you do it in on church. sunday morning is because we have that example from mm -hmm. hebrew tradition mm -hmm. of standing to read the the torah and then we we read the scriptures together mm -hmm. while we're standing and uh, so we see that uh but then so then when they when they read what do they find out well, the first thing they do is that, that I loved was the way they listened. They yeah. just didn't listen. It yeah. says they listened intently, intently, and they listened as one man. Mm -hmm. So all their hearts were together as one. And by the way, that's not the first time that happened. It happened back in Ezra's book also. Yeah. Uh, their, their hearts came as one man also when they were building the temple. It wasn't the temple of Solomon. I mean, it was a much smaller temple, but still they came together doing that mm -hmm. and sometimes I think we forget when we read this scripture that how uh, how God it, he was working at the hearts of the people and even during Ezra's time when they were building the temple you know that there's a verse and I'm, it, it says if God will in, if you're faithful in a little mm -hmm. God will yeah. be yeah. Fa uh, you'll be faithful also yes. in much yeah. right the and I, the talents. I, yeah exactly yeah. so I think that's what God was doing with the people I think he got them started on the temple and mm -hmm. got their worked on their hearts there and got their hearts right mm -hmm. and then when they came to a much bigger task of, of completing a, com a, a, a complete wall yeah. uh, their hearts were already softened and molded mm -hmm. and they were they were ready for this particular mm -hmm. task and the whole task was not I don't think God cared so much about the wall he cares about your heart your heart that's yeah. where he's at, that's and that's it. where the scripture is. At. That's exactly right. And so they were they were weeping when they found the book of the law, and but then they read about the feast of booths, mm -hmm. uh, the the feast of tabernacles. That's right. Uh, we now, modern day the word is Sukkot. Mm -hmm. So that that feast occurs uh, somewhere around October, about on our calendar. Mm -hmm. It's in the fall. Uh, it's kind of like their fall festival. It's a celebration. But they found out 
as they were reading that that was the time of the year that they were reading. Mm-hmm. And so then you get to the passage uh, here in verse 9. So why don't, we, why don't we read that together? We'll read the whole paragraph, and then we can break it down a little bit. Okay, so, so what is the Feast of the Tabernacles, actually? Okay, so think, thinking about the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, it's, a, it's a time to remember the, the exodus. Right. It's a time to remember the, wandering, it, the wanderings in the wilderness. For 40 years, the Israelites lived in the desert, and they lived in tents. Uh, and they moved from place to place. They were nomadic. Mm-hmm. And, but during that time, the Bible says that God took care of them, took care of all of their needs. They had food and they had water, uh, and their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes on their feet didn't, didn't wear out. Fall. I mean, I, I have a hard time keeping a pair of shoes for a year. They live 40 years with the same kids? stuff. That's right. <laughs> I, my kids, they, don't, they, they wear shoes out too fast before they grow out of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, so... Um, they lived for 40 years with all of the goods that they came out of Egypt with, and it sustained them. Mm-hmm. But really, it wasn't the things that were sustaining them. It was the Lord That's who right. was sustaining them all the way through. And he wanted to remind them of that yearly, uh, of, of the fact that even though you're being blessed now, and even though you're coming out of exile again, and you're inhabiting the land again, you know, that this feast was the first thing that they observed while they were there, and it was a reminder to them that the Lord was going to sustain them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but but thinking about the passage, let's just read what it says. Uh, the whole the whole thing. I'll read it this okay. time, and we're going to read verses nine uh, through twelve of Nehemiah chapter eight, and it says, "And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people." said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and send portions and to make great rejoicing because they had understood the words that were declared to them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as, as we think about that, there's a, you know, there's a few things that we can point out, we can mention. Uh, first of all, they're weeping. I wonder why. Why are they weeping? I mean, they they just read the Bible, right? That's all mm-hmm. they did. Why Why did it make them weep? Well, I think there's two reasons they weeped. Uh, the first reason is obviously it pierced their heart. Yeah. Okay. It pierced their heart, and uh, I think any of them were just. I mean, that, that we're all sinful people, so they realized, wow, we're sinful. Mm-hmm. And they were crying over that, yeah. right? But mm-hmm. they were also tears of joy at the yeah, same time. Certainly, That's what it was. Yeah, so that was a combination of both of those two things. That's right. Reading word, God's Word pierced their soul. Yeah, That's it what did. it says. It'll and it's a good soul. piercing. That's right. So that's the thing. You know, when you read God's Word, it is like a, a double-edged sword, is what the writer of Hebrews says. Mm-hmm. And it pierces within us. But it's a good piercing. It's like, uh, it's like a surgeon's scalpel you know it's cutting in and so it, it is cutting but at the same time he's there to do good he's mm-hmm. there to remove what shouldn't be there that's right. and so that's what god's word does for us so yeah they've just gone through that process and i would encourage you if you haven't been in god's word don't be afraid to let that happen mm-hmm. even today it might hurt a little bit might sting a little bit when you get back into god's word but i'll tell you it's a good it's a good cutting it's a good piercing that's going to take place mm-hmm. and god's going to bring about good as you go through that with him but then they they're told by nehemiah and and the the priest and the levites they they calm them down they tell them calm down mm-hmm. why would why was he telling them that well he said uh, he wanted them to be still Mm-hmm. Um, he wanted to, I, I think, absorb God's word even more. And you have to realize that everybody, I don't believe, could hear Ezra when mm-hmm. Ezra was speaking, okay? Yeah. He took a lot of the Levites with him. Yeah. And they were like, I wouldn't say interpreters, but they were spread out in the congregation. You have to realize there was, what, 52,000 
Yeah. There, 50, was, a, there was a lot of 52, people. 52,000 people. Now, you yeah. just think about 52,000 people in front of our church, mm -hmm. the blocks that would take. Yeah. And you could stand up on a on a podium and yell all you want. But yeah, the people and, the the babies, and the babies crying because it said the That's babies right. were there, men, women, children. They were all there. Anyone who was able to to hear and listen were, were there. That's right. So you could think about the, the noise and... And that crowd, mm -hmm. you know what that was like. But they did stand still and they listen, they so didn't. they were attentive. Well, it says anyone, the Bible said. anyone. Could, the verse said anyone who could hear and understand mm -hmm. was quiet and listened, mm -hmm. and that includes children. I wonder if they had nursery. Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> but I, I got a, a one minute story I'd like to share sure, you go that, that deals Tell with me. this. Okay, yeah, because I thought about kids in church. I'm mm -hmm. I'm a proponent of kids in church. Okay. That, that listen and, and pay attention and all mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah, but me too. I was sitting next to, my wife and I were sitting next to a friend of hers at a church, and a little girl, 10 years old, I don't think she was 10, I think she was 7 at the time, um, she was coloring the whole time. And then all of a sudden, the pastor was preaching on uh, salvation, on hell and everything else, right? The little girl looks up at my wife and says, I need to be saved. Wow. Just like that. That's amazing. Kids listen. Yeah. They, they listen. Mm -hmm. They may be coloring, mm -hmm. but uh, just like watching parents. You, you never know what they're absorbing. Exactly. And that, that's also a caution, too. That's right. You know, because you never know what they're actually absorbing that you don't want them to hear mm -hmm. or, or absorb. So, you know, where you turn your stereo dial or the television, how you have the television on, what they're hearing, they may be absorbing it. Even mm -hmm. if they're in another room, that's they right. might absorb it. Somebody uh, told me that. What you say when your cup gets bumped. Yeah, that's right. That's a good one. So. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good thought. So all of the the whole congregation is there. Mm -hmm. They've heard. They've been they they've been pierced in their heart uh, from the word, and then they realize, okay, now we're supposed to today we're supposed to be celebrating Sukkot, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a festival. It's a it's a rejoicing that God has provided. He's brought us into the land, and we can remember all the provision that He gave in the wilderness and now we're in the land you know but God had uh, told them to be careful not to think that they they were able to get all of these blessings by their own hands that it was something that they did but it, that it was God who right. had already prepared the land for them to go into it was God who had given them the strength even to do the work and labor and to, to till the ground I read this and uh, just want to read quote it says Moses Moses often warn the Israelites not to forget the God who redeemed them from slavery once they were fat and happy in the promised land. That's Deuteronomy 8. Mm -hmm. This reveals another purpose of Sukkot. It could be tempting for the Israelites to sit in their houses after a great harvest and say, look at what we did and how we have profited. Living in booths for a week, if you think about that, if you've been camping, you know, if any, anybody's ever been camping and just lived in a tent, you learn to, to live without the comforts of your home and to live without, you know, the normal things that, that uh, our lifestyle in America normally revolves around. Uh, you live without those for a week, you know, you think about that. And, and so what that does is it reminded them that their successes uh, was wholly on account of the Lord's grace. He had brought them to the good land and could just as easily take them out of it. Mm -hmm. So he brought them in, but he could take them out. Mm -hmm. And that's and that was a reminder, you know, just to think back of where we just came from. We just came from exile. And now we want to remind ourselves that we can go right back into exile mm -hmm. if we if we abandon the Lord. Mm -hmm. If we if we start to hold on to things rather than holding mm -hmm. on to the Lord. And so uh, a tangible reminder of his provision in the wilderness during Sukkot showed the Israelites they must always trust him alone for their supply. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference in hearing God's word mm -hmm. and understanding God's word. Yep. And that's the difference. The difference is not only did they hear God's word, but they understood yep. what Ezra was reading. Yeah. And it pierced all the way. It made all sense. The way. Yeah. Yeah. It says that in verse 12, because they had understood That's right. the words that were declared to them. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's, let's get to the very heart, the very core in verse 10. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine. All right. So, so, so first off, they have permission now to celebrate mm -hmm. that permission to, to enjoy 
what God has given them, right? But mm-hmm. then what's the next part? It says, uh, and send portions. Right. Yeah. And send portions. To anyone who has nothing ready. Mm-hmm. So if you think about that, what what is this? There's an obligation here, isn't there? Well, there is. Yeah, they, uh, obviously some people had lots, but then some people didn't have anything. Yeah. And uh, they're supposed to share. They're supposed to get excited. They're supposed to uh, love your neighbor, basically. Yeah, love your neighbor. Yeah. And then, so then that that's follow, follows up with the, this it says for this day is holy to our Lord, mm-hmm. and we understand that what Paul tells us uh, in Galatians and in other places is that every day now in the New Testament, because of, because we're under the new covenant, every day is holy to the Lord. Mm-hmm. All of these things, Sukkot and all of the other festivals, those are foreshadowing of of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ mm-hmm. in the New Testament. So we understand that every day should be Sukkot for the believer. Mm-hmm. Every day is a day to tabernacle. Every day is a day to remember how God has provided for us and to rejoice in that. And so then we get to that, that line that really sticks in your heart. That's right. Don't we? What does it say? Why don't you read it again? It says, course. do not grieve for the day of the Lord is your strength. The yeah. joy of the Lord is yeah. your strength. The joy of yeah. the Lord is your strength. Mm-hmm. And if we think about that, his joy, um, the, the joy, there's a difference, obviously, between joy and happiness, and many people point this out. But, but in, your, in your own words, your own thought, what's the difference between having joy and being happy? Okay, well, I can be happy about a lot of things. I can be happy about a ball team winning a game or something yeah. like that, right? Mm-hmm. And, but that doesn't have any eternal value, yeah, right? That's right. I think joy is, is what you get that that gives you eternal value and Mm -hmm. and I wrote some things down what joy what is the joy of the Lord and I just wrote some things that affected me okay Um, it's comfort yeah you know how nice it is to be comfortable and I'm not talking about in a nice chair or anything like that I'm talking about comfortable with talking to God Mm -hmm. it's it's a special feeling when you can get very comfortable at times and talk with God doesn't Mm -hmm. happen every day with me but there's sometimes when it's just you need yeah. that comfort that only God can give. Um, so even joy, God shows me my sin. Mm. Aren't you glad the Holy Spirit convicts yeah. you? Mm. I mean, that's that's joy right there to me. Know mm. that I have that comforter with me all the time. Yeah, it takes some it takes some maturity to understand that. I think because whenever I'm a whenever I was a teenager or even a child, young child, I didn't really appreciate getting the spankings mm-hmm. that I got or the you know the correction that you got the discipline of my father and my mother you know but when you're older and you look back and you realize they did that because they loved me they corrected me from right. from my error so that I would grow and then you understand you put that in perspective you know in, through a spiritual lens and you say okay this is what our heavenly father does for us so anytime he's correcting me revealing my sin to me mm-hmm. I'll, it may hurt in the moment but it's his way of of showing me that he loves me mm-hmm. uh, and not letting me go. Mm-hmm. He's going to he loves me enough that he's willing to discipline me. Yeah, um, I didn't get too many spankings when I was a kid. Oh yeah, believe it or not, I could outrun my mom and my dad. So <laughs> not yeah. that you did not that you didn't deserve. Oh, I deserved a lot of them. Yeah, <laughs> you just but, avoided. But, but my so father much. was real good because my father would set me down just like you said. And he would explain to me what I did, and it oh, was yeah. it was it. that conviction mm-hmm. you got. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't being hit; it was just how bad I felt that I disappointed my mom or dad. Yeah, and yeah. And, and, and I've done that with my children also. Mm-hmm. I always tell them, you know, what would you do to your child if they did what you just did? And yeah. nine out of ten times, spank them. I said, okay. Yeah. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I didn't. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, it's and every every child is different. So, but the. But the Lord, He knows exactly what we need, mm-hmm. and He disciplines us according to what we need in the moment. Mm-hmm. And He and He loves us enough that He's willing to do that, even mm-hmm. if it hurts us a little bit. You know. Can I interject in something here? Sure. The the other the last thing that I wrote down about joy that that affected me, and I, I said, peace during times of trouble. Yeah. Amen. And I just thought about where we're at today, yes. what we're going through. Not just our country, but all countries are going through. Yeah, that's right. It's that peace that he gives you that, you know, may I, is there a possibility I may get this virus? Sure, I may get it, but guess mm-hmm. what? Even if I die, I know where I'm going. Amen. Yeah. So, There's security in that. Absolutely. And, and so then what that 
translates. I think you can see right now, you can you can see a big difference between the attitude and the response of those who know the Lord mm. and those who don't. That's right. A lot of people right now are, what I see even more than panic, I see anger. I see a lot of bitterness and anger in the world out there. But then I look at my, my friends who know the Lord and my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I see nothing but sheer joy. I see joy. I see peace. Uh, I see ministry taking place. Absolutely. I see the, the church being stronger than in a lot of ways than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. You know, in our lifetimes, we've never faced something like this in any of our lifetimes. Uh, so I feel like we're, we're, really, we're really shining as a church, and God is doing something amazing even through such a terrible thing. That's right. You know? That's right. And so, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. I wish and, I had the list that Ellen Guerin made of all the positives that are coming out of this. Yeah. Unbelievable list. Yeah. Families are closer together. Yeah. You know, people are praying. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a beautiful list of things she wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, We're getting out of our comfort zones, too. Exactly. We're having to learn new exactly. ways to minister to each other and minister to the community. Mm -hmm. God's doing a lot of things right now. He's still at work. He's, He's still alive. He's in charge. That's mm -hmm. right. So... So I, I want to invite you. We're going we're gonna to kind of wrap this up. Mr. Jim, do you have any other thoughts before I, I wrap it up and we pray? Uh, just the fact that I'm very, very thankful that God led you and your family to this church oh, well, at this given I'm, time. I'm very thankful as it's well. It's one of those for such a time as this. We, we needed you and we needed your family, and we're very, yeah, very, right. very thankful. So. Yeah, very glad to be here. And, uh, you know, let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Absolutely. And uh, wherever you are, how, however you're watching this video, I pray that uh, our, our Bible study together, it encourages you. I pray that you would even take what you've just heard and you would share it with someone else and tell them how they can have the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And even in uh, the most difficult circumstances, the Lord's strength would would build would well up inside of them as they develop that relationship with the Lord and they mm -hmm. walk with Him daily. Uh, the time, now is not a time to panic. Sure. Now is a time for the church to shine. Now is a time for you and me to be busy about doing the work of the Lord, doing our Father's business here on this earth. And He will use this for His glory. And I pray that you will be a part of that. Sure. Uh, let me pray for you right now. Father God, I pray that you would strengthen us, Lord, and that you would give us your joy that overflows. Uh, Lord, that uh, we would always be reminded that uh, the things on this earth are, are temporal. And uh, Paul reminds us that this, this earthly tent, it, it may be destroyed. Uh, but, but Lord, ultimately, we will be with you and in, in your presence. And so, Father, no matter what happens on this earth, the circumstances of life cannot steal our joy away. Uh, it, it, is, it comes from you. And so, Father... Uh, thank you for that. And Lord, uh, as we encounter those who don't know you um, in the world around us, uh, I pray, Father, that we would shine the light of Christ. They would see the joy of the Lord upon us, and it would be evident that we know you. Uh, and Lord, we would be willing to open up our mouths and share the hope that's within us. We wouldn't keep it in, but we would let it out everywhere we go. Thank you for Brother Jim. Thank you for his wisdom. And thank you for uh, he, not only him sharing this passage with me, but also uh, his willingness to come and share it with all of those who are listening to, today. And Father, I just pray that you give him a special blessing for that. And for Myrtle Grove Baptist Church, God, uh, that you would just draw us close together. Um, Lord, that you would build us up and that we would be the church that you've called us to be. Right. We ask all these things in the holy and precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Glad you were here. With, oh, what? Fist bump. <laughs> <laughs>